it's time to talk about the anoxic experiment. Hello everyone, this is Bentley. We gotta talk about this bad boy. Now notice, I know people are gonna beat me up. It's still cloudy. It's not as bad as it used to be. We're getting there, alright? That's not the part you care about, right? A little cloudy water. I don't stress about that. Let's talk about results. As you recall, uh, the last time we talked about the Edox experiment, we basically had to kind of restart, adjust, because we got some good information uh, from a number of wastewater engineers actually basically indicating, hey, one of your problems might be that you're not getting a significant carbon source into your system, and thus without the carbon, the bacteria colony cannot properly form. So you need to find a way to add carbon. And we had multiple suggestions uh, from vodka, which is done in reef dosing tanks, actually quite commonly. I, I don't want to say common because it's not the super common thing, but it is more common than you might think. Or just adding fish food. And originally I was going to use vodka because it's something that I can easily dose and keep at a very measured amount and know precisely how much is going into the aquarium. But I saw this other comment after I talked about that. And it was basically like, hey... It's really hard for me to like see an amount of vodka and equate that in my head to an amount of fish food. Whereas an amount of fish food makes more sense. I have a bunch of spare crumble nice food from Extreme. I've given some of these away. Maybe I need to give away some more. But um, I've been using this uh, as my carbon source. And I left it over there. <laughs> for those that are, are used to like um, the small measuring spoons that are like pinch, dash, smidgen, and all that kind of stuff. I have been dosing a pinch, perfectly leveled, so that's a, a measurement, not, not a guess, right? A pinch by a measuring spoon daily. Now, I will admit there are a few days I've missed because of work late. I got home, I was tired, and I forgot. However, for the most part, uh, this tank has effectively had a pinch of this fish food every day um for the first about two weeks i will say i did it every other day um this was just to kind of space it out and make sure that i didn't have a sudden spike as i was going from no food to some food within the tank yes we were previously using my friend ammonium chloride as an ammonia source uh, a little bit not very often basically just to supplement so like the very first one we restarted i used some ammonium chloride to make sure that we had a reasonable amount of ammonia to feed the bacteria that was present. Because we do have aerobic bacteria in the sponge filter that's right over here. And um, we've been using this internal canister basically just to help do some water polishing. Uh, I mentioned in the past that some of the iron source we got, that powdered iron, very clearly got into the water column. So I've been using this to kind of filter it out. But other than that, it's not really having significant impact in the sense of bacterial colony because I change the um, filter floss inside of it very regularly. And it only runs for like a day or so each week. Uh, I'm, I'm not running it constantly. It's just there to basically help do some water polishing, uh, especially after I have topped off the tank. Uh, so once it's at full water, I change out the filter floss, run it for a couple of days, repeat. Pretty simple. Let's talk results. I'm gonna start putting them up on the screen. You can see we'll go through the co-op versus the Tetra test strips versus the API Liquid Master Kit. And I think you'll see the same thing across all the results. Although I will say that the nitrate readings on the Aquarium Co-op Kit have been a little less on the nose to the Liquid Master Kit, which makes me a little leery, but there's a potential that they um, they just aren't as sensitive or there's some other thing going on. Like, testing kits can have all sorts of issues when you're talking about strips. Regardless, what you should see is the nitrates slowly climb up. Remember, we're basically not doing any water changes except for the first one. Um, I did, I have removed a tiny amount of water whenever I saw food sitting in a cluster at a risk of fouling up uh, when I go to do my weekly top off. So I would basically just skim that tiny amount of food out of the tank to make sure we're not dealing with any kind of fungus or mold or anything like that. Um, the impact on this is very, very minor. We're pulling out 
less than a gallon of water and then topping up. So this isn't a real uh, significant water change that would truly impact our numbers. But what you'll see across all the testing is our, um, our ammonia and nitrite stays rock solid. And in general, our pH, GH, and KH are all staying right at the same numbers. So we found kind of a stable point. The water is a little soft in this tank, um, but it's not egregiously soft, right? Uh, but by doing this, what we're seeing is a slow and steady increase in nitrates. And there will probably be some people that will say, well, yeah, it's gonna happen. It takes months and months and months. We have part of a colony and the amount of time should have established. We've, we've kind of added some carbon sources. What we did is just make sure that we had a consistent carbon and food source coming into the aquarium rather than our ammonium chloride dosing. Um, so I struggle to like give credence to the like, well, just you just need to keep doing the experiment longer. We, we've done this for so long at this point that we should have seen something, even if it was just like the nitrates would curtail out. But what we see is a albeit slow, so one could argue there's a potential minor impact from the anoxic system, the bacteria that is growing in the area uh, at the toward the bottom near the slow moving plenum, right? Where the water gets very, very slow, the oxygenation level gets a lot lower. We could argue that there is possibly some denitrification occurring, right? Some natural denitrification and not in the way that plants would do it. Uh, the way that we are expecting the anoxic bacteria to do so. But what I would kind of expect to see is that we don't keep seeing a steady climb. Because of how little food we're putting into the system in the grand scheme of things, and the bacteria doing its job collectively between the aerobic and uh, anoxic, we should see kind of a cap off. And I wouldn't expect it to slowly creep up to basically 80 parts per million. Um, I would expect it maybe to sit in that more 40 range uh, especially considering we're doing some minor dilution when we do a water top off. We're not doing full out water changes, which would be big dilutions. So it's just, it seems unlikely that the system is having any large impact. Now you might say, okay, Bentley, but over the period of time in which we've done this, which is several months, that creep up is pretty slow. I'll agree with you there. It is fairly slow. However, that pinch of food is a lot less than I think most of us would probably be putting into something like a 40-gallon breeder, depending on the number of fish or type of fish we're putting into this tank. It might be exactly what you would put in this tank. I, I think that's, that's one of the things where we could, um, we could probably argue back and forth, debate a little bit, but I feel like it's a reasonable representation of a daily feeding amount for a reasonable group of community fish, which, you know, that should give us enough of all the things, right, that should produce a reasonably healthy bacteria colony, and in theory that colony should... I, I, I have to put some things here because, of course, there's always going to be room for argument and debate on it, but that colony should at this point, after the number of months we've been running, especially with so small changes to kind of power boost it, if you will, get it to a point of where it's really kicking off. And unfortunately, we're not seeing that. Or maybe fortunately, it depends on which side of the fence you want to be on, whether you really want to see a noxic function or whether you're on the side of the fence that's like, I don't believe in it, it's all a scam, blah, blah, blah. Here's what I will say. Regardless of the results of my test, if you are currently a running an anoxic system or a slow-moving plenum and you have a bunch of plants, keep doing it. If you're having success with this type of system, don't change it. When you have success, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? And what I will say is that there is a massive benefit to having water being forcibly moved down through the substrate system. And that is if you're having any root feeding plants, whether it's swords, crypts, aponogetans, um, Nymphaea, that's what I'm looking for, Lit lotuses and lilies. All of those are going to benefit from that because it's going to help pull more nutrients into the root system and keep the root system minorly oxygenated. And they do need oxygen in the roots. So that's where I would say 
there's actually benefit to keeping this kind of system running in some way, shape, or form for the plants. And the plants can do a lot of the work for you. So even if my experiment proves or disproves, this is probably how you choose to interpret my test results. And I'll totally understand that, uh, that people will probably fight to the nail. To me, it kind of shows that the anoxic bacteria alone is not significant enough to create denitrification naturally. Now, this much algae could do all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Or this much plant matter could do all sorts of crazy stuff. But just the substrate with the anoxic system being the housing ground for the bacteria is not putting a significant dent in the natural denitrification process per my testing results. Is this a fully scientific crazy test? No. But I think this is a reasonable test that any hobbyist could do uh, and admitting some problems that we've had, right? But still, this is a functional tank. It can handle a reasonable spike of ammonia. And before this video, I did one extra test. I put in... Let me remind myself here. Two teaspoons of ammonia chloride, which should get this tank to about three and a half to four parts per million ammonia. I did that two days ago before filming this after I'd completed basically all of my, my tests and uh, it's at zero. There's a little nitrite in it right now, but it's at the lowest thing that the tests pick up. So between the aerobic and anoxic system that are in this aquarium right now, it actually handles a significant amount of ammonia fairly fast. So it can handle a reasonably good bio load from fish just off of this. But what would happen if you had that big a bio load is you would probably see the nitrates climb significantly faster than what we did in the rest of the experiment. And just for reference, the last set of testing does include <laughs> that ammonia chloride just so you can see, like, the nitrite there, but uh, which is potentially dangerous, right? We wouldn't do this with actual fish, but it's just something of, it's like, this established system, how much ammonia can it handle in a short period of time? And the answer is a surprising amount, <laughs> actually, given that there's, there's no plants. It is just a simple system. So in that regard, it is ready for fish and ready for plants. And at this point... I think I've decided I'm done running through tests week to week to week. I would rather turn this into a functional tank with some plants and some fish. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, as, as we're getting toward the holidays, I've got a few extra days off. I'm going to try and see if I can get a reasonable set of plants to go into this aquarium. Maybe a couple of rocks and aquascape it in some way, shape or form. Um, this will be my tank. So uh, <laughs> I'll do that however I please. But uh, the, the fish that will go in there, we'll talk about those later and why I'm choosing to do it the way I'm doing it. Um, I probably won't go too crazy on the aquascaping because of what I want to do with this tank, but I will have a significant amount of plants in there because you guys have seen my tanks. I'm, I'm a plant psycho. I love plants. But the end result is this. Just because it doesn't fully denitrify at a rate that, is, that I would deem significant doesn't mean that it is not an effective system for maintaining the basics you need to have success with your fish. I don't think you should try to rely on anoxic systems like this, right? The anoxic bacteria, the slow moving plenum to be doing the work to keep your water at that, like no water change level. However, if you have a slow moving plenum with a bunch of plants and especially plants that are root feeding so that, that forced water flow brings more nutrients and oxygenation, even if it's low levels of oxygen, down to the roots of your plants, you will have a very healthy tank because the plants can do a lot of that filtration work for you naturally. You've got nice oxygenation. You Maybe you combine it with something like a sponge filter or something else to get a little bit more movement and flow so you don't have debris sitting anywhere too badly you can have a phenomenal, healthy tank. But just understand it's the plants doing the work. And I think if you take that, then 
there's a lot of excuse, reason, choose you want to use a system like this. I don't think that um, it's necessarily like, oh, oh, it's horrible, you should never use it. Like, no, I disagree, because the basic undergravel filter, without trying to set up specifically for an anoxic environment, has worked for decades. And you'll, you'll probably find plenty of grandpas in the comments who are like, I've been using my undergravel filter for 45 years. It's amazing, right? Because it's a simple system, but it does the trick, and it has inherently built-in mechanical filtration. And if you combine that with the natural biological capability of plants, you get a great system. Uh, hopefully your water doesn't cloud up like mine has, but, you know, this is getting better and it will continue to get better. And then by the time it's cleared up and the plants are growing in and all that kind of stuff, I get to move some fish over and enjoy another aquarium. That's it, guys. Uh, that is the anoxic experiment. Um, I wouldn't say that it's... A failure. I think there's great lessons to be learned in this, but I, my results would indicate to me, at least, that anoxic bacteria alone is not a significant source of denitrification. And where we are seeing denitrification in a majority of the anoxic systems we are seeing is probably the result of the plants. Now, nature is a different story. It's a much larger scale. We're not trying to control it in a 20, 30, 40 gallon box. Um, you have massive volumes of water and all sorts of other things at play. We can't really replicate that in a home aquarium. But we can still put together a useful system that has its benefits and utilize those benefits to create success with our fish. If you've enjoyed this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Is there a lesson you learned? Something you feel I missed? I did completely wrong? Whatever that may be. Uh, those these things like this, that kind of interaction really helps tell the old YouTube gods that like, hey, I like this and maybe someone else will too. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. That way you don't miss any of the videos coming out. Um, I'm working on a couple of new things in the new year. I've been way behind on a few stuff, just mostly because of work and life doing things and stuff. But uh, my goal is to get a, a number of different things coming out here relatively soon, including like the shroom tour and stuff like that. Some new tanks getting set up, all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, yeah, just continuously looking at uh, potentially new products and things like that. It just depends on what comes down the line and what seems interesting or what has a huge demand from you. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.